Hi there everyone, welcome back to Dandelion Delphi Tutorials. Today we're going to look at database programming. Now database programming is making use of addo tables and for grade 12s you can expect this as question 2.2 in your final exams. We are going to look at inserting new records into tables but there's a few things to keep in mind if tables are linked. So if we have a one-to-many relationship, I refer to this as the parent table and this is the child table as one parent has many children. But let's just look at the parent table first. When we're inserting a new record, we always have to ensure, first of all, that the ID field has a value. It's not important to add a new value to all the fields of this table but the primary key always needs a value and that value needs to be unique. The only exception is if this field, let's say this ID field that is the primary key of this teacher table, has a data type in the database um, that is set as an auto number, then we should not include it because that will then automatically be added by SQL and Access. If you try to add a value to this ID field that was set as an auto number, you will experience an error. Now the same rule applies to the primary key of the child table. So important to add a primary key that is unique. You don't have to fill in these values here for those fields. But what is important, that if it's an auto number, we're not going to add it. But the child has another rule to follow. The child table in this case has been linked through the teacher ID. So this is called my foreign key where the many sits. And it is almost like the Sims game because no child can be born without a parent. And for that reason, we always have to add a foreign key value to the usernames table or to our child table. So you can't leave this one blank ever and it will never be an auto number because it has to have an existing value in the teacher field and that is the next rule. We have to make sure that if we want to add a new learner that the teacher ID field, the foreign key, has an existing value in the parent table so that no child is left without a parent. So let's say I wanted to add a learner to a teacher with a code 002. I would have to make sure that the code 002 is one of the primary key values of one of the teachers. The same rule goes for edit. If you wanted to make a change to the primary key, then you have to make sure that if you are changing it, it is going to be unique. And if you are making a change and allocating a new teacher, it's important that that ID does exist in the teacher table. Now, when we want to delete from tables, it's very important that no child is left without a parent. So let's say I wanted to delete the teacher 002 that has resigned. I can't delete from the parent table, this teacher table, until I have either moved all the learners to another teacher's ID that exists, or I delete all those learners with a code 002 linked to teacher ID. Then only am I able to delete from the teacher's table, which is my parent table, the teacher with the ID 002. So make sure no child is left without a parent. So to insert a new record, we're going to start with the name of the table and then a dot insert. And then very important for both edit and insert is that we have a dot post at the end. We do not need to go to the last record using dot last. It will automatically add to the bottom of your table. Then you will follow insert with the name of the table and in square brackets list the field to which you are going to add new values to. Now this first example is where the learner ID is my primary key and my primary key is not an auto number 
but the number of records and my primary key corresponds. In other words, if I had 10 learners in there, then the learner IDs will run from 1 to 10. So in order to give a unique value to the next learner, I'm using my record count. So tblearner.recordCount, that would be 10, plus 1. So I'm allocating the learner ID of 11 to this new learner. In this example, the child table is the learner table, and the parent table is the teacher table, and they have been linked through a field called teacher ID. And what this line of code is doing is it's taking the active record from the table TBL teacher. In other words, there where you see that black triangle on the DB grid, that is the active record. And it's taking an existing value from the teacher ID, from that record that is selected, and allocating that to the learner table in this way, we know that the learner has a value from an existing teacher. An idea for your pad would be to create a combo box using your table TBL teacher or your parent table and then the user can click on existing values from the parent table from the teacher's ID in this example to allocate existing values to the learner to make sure that no child is left without a parent. Now for the other values that I'm adding here, we can have hard code. So the question could ask us, add John Smith, and we would have to add their name. If it is a text data type, we'll put the quotes around it if it is hard coded. We could also get input from the user from uh, objects on your form, like for example an edit box, or for a surname, maybe you could have written an input box for the user to enter the surname. If it was a field like, let's say, for example, a province, that could maybe be listed in a radio group that they click on. And in that way, we can also get input from the user for a text data type in our table. Now, if it is a number like grade, we will just simply put the number there if it's hard coded. We could also get input from the user and store it as an integer value or real value and allocate that to the learner's mark. Um, I note there there's a semicolon missing. For yes, no fields, we could allocate hard code. So we can put a true or a false there. Just note there won't be any quotes around it. Or we could get input from the user from maybe the check property of a checkbox that they click on. And then for dates, we have the date registered, which is the date time data type in my database. I could get a value there from the date, the system date using the date function. Or I could possibly also get input from the user from a date time picker and allocate that to a date time data type. And then finally, just remember your post that will make the change to your database and add the record to the end of the table. This is now your time to practice, so if you haven't done so already, go and download the data files from this link so that we can work in the ebooks example and practice. In the data files, you're going to find a folder called Addo Tables, and inside there is another folder called ebooks. So I'd like you to try the menu Add Teacher and press pause so that I can show you the memo thereafter. Important to note is if you have a look at the design view of the teacher's table in which we are inserting, that the primary key, the field named ID, is an auto number, so we will not be inserting a value into that ID field as it would cause an error. So here is the memo. We have .insert and .post, and in between we have the names of the fields, and then we have Mr. Grobler and his email address, and his class number all entered as hard code. All of these fields were text data types, so we have placed these in inverted commas. Now try the menu New Learners. We are inserting into the child table. Press pause, try it yourself, and then push play as soon as you're done so I can show you the memo. Note here that we're using the current active record from the table TBL teacher to allocate a foreign key 
to this learner. So the person is entering the values for the name and the surname in an input box. You could also put this code directly in here, but I've just shown you an example of first storing it. We are getting the input from the combo box for their class, so the value they selected from the combo box. And then we are picking a random number for their grade, a number from 8 to 12. Remember, random range excludes the second argument. So we'll go from 8 to 13 inside of the random range, but that will pick random numbers from 8 to 12. And then we have our insert and our post. And here to the fields, we are allocating the values. The Wi-Fi field is a yes, no field, and it's getting a value from the checkbox checked property. So if the person click on the checkbox, a true will be allocated or a yes. And if they didn't click on it, a false will be allocated to the Wi-Fi, whether they've connected to the Wi-Fi or not. The teacher ID field in TBL username is the foreign key. And that is getting a value from the active record in TBL teacher. In other words, the one that was clicked on by using the value stored in that ID field of the active record and allocating that to this new user. So we know that the TBL username's foreign key will get a value from an existing value from the teacher's table and they won't be left without a parent. And then they haven't paid anything yet, so the amount is set to zero. And just remember your dot post. And that is it for today. You are welcome to go and have a look at Dandelion Delphi Book 2 for more exercises and explanations on database programming using Addo tables. Hope to see you soon.